Hello, welcome to this week's legislative update. I'm Jim Baumgart, your host, and my co-host uh, is Nanette Bullabush. I'm honored to be here. From Elkhart Lake. Yes. Where the Kettle Marine uh, is nice. It's got Elkhart <laughs> Lake. It's got all kinds of trees, the that forest. That is for sure. Um, and, and the farm you got out there. We do. My husband's a farmer. Yes. yes. And Cal Potter, a former state senator, mm -hmm. is a... Uh, uh, the person to provide us some wisdom because what we want to talk about today uh, is issues and topics that uh, may be important and how uh, we can solve those problems and, you know, um, sort of a discussion period. Uh, and the uh, viewers can uh, sit there and watch us and listen. <laughs> and or throw things at the television. <laughs> <or> whatever, <laughs> whatever moves in, right? Or, right. or take some of the advice and, and maybe get involved. Yes. Um, one of the issues um, that, uh, as a county board supervisor, I had uh, in the beginning of January, people made a point because they knew I was a county board supervisor, said, these roads stink. There's <laughs> big ruts in them. And so it was. And, and I said, well, because the legislature in Madison is not willing to you know, pay for the bill, and they want to borrow to do it, and there's a big conflict, uh, and we're not getting the money, and we're paying doing only 17 miles of roads, of county roads, and we should be doing 30, we have a trouble, we have trouble. And so they said, well, fix it. So we passed the half a thin sales tax. And now we're doing 30 miles of, of pavement a year as we're supposed to, and we're giving every town, city, and village part of the nine and a half million dollars that we get from that half a thin sales tax. And we solve the problem, but you got to have a problem, and you got to be willing to solve it. But you can't sit back and just grumble about it. Right. So, so a year later now, since that it started, you're happy with the vote. You're happy with the tax. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Well, I'm not sure I'm ever happy with the tax, but I'm well, happy what it's doing. Right. That's it's what I paving mean. thirty it's miles of the road that will keep our roads up, so people can get to work. They can move product to, to market, and uh, we're doing what we're supposed to as the government. Yeah, no. unlike the state. Right. I mean, it's yeah, the, the, state, the state borrows rather than uh, raising the gas tax <coughs> like they should at a time, particularly mm -hmm. when the gas is low in price. Right. And all, at the same time, the, the knucklehead that we have as governor has come out and did, really chucked mean, away uh, high-speed <coughs> rail. Right. I mean, if you look, this nation is going to be $450 million in about 30 years, up from $330 million, and you won't be able to continue to build highways. No. We can't afford the loss of farmland or, or any type of land, or in the cities, you can't uh, put a fourth and fifth lane on these freeways without massive disruption of people. Yeah. So it isn't going to happen. And so cities like Milwaukee and other urban areas and people in the states in general are going to have to start looking at, at rail and high-speed rail. And Wisconsin had a great opportunity oh. to have not only the manufacturer we of the cars here, we uh, but uh, the governor canceled because, oh, maybe we're going to have to subsidize it. Well, he doesn't want to subsidize anything. He obviously wants to borrow for roads, but everything is subsidized. Whether you, you run an airport, sure. there's a fuel tax involved there. Um, and whether you drive a car, you subsidize roads. Well, rail is going to have to be subsidized too. It's just the price of, human, of being in civilization. We and could so, have done it in a much more cost-effective way sure, until sure. we dropped it. And it's it. a shame because really the high-speed rail system that was being proposed by the federal government was going to run from, well, in this area, from Chicago to Minneapolis. Yeah. Now, if you don't participate, what is it going to do? Take a right angle to Iowa and then up through Minnesota? You know, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. And this guy calls himself a, a, a thinking governor. I, I, I think he was dropped on his head at some time in his life because this was an absolutely stupid, uh, unreasonable thing to do uh, when we look towards the future. And as Jim has said, the county has picked up the ball on, on roads, but the Good. state needs to, to follow right. suit. Instead of cutting. Well, what about... You have an issue there that you want to bring I up? I do. I want to talk about AB 455 with oh, the hunter in the group. the baby group. bill. The, well, what it does, as I understand it, and the and governor, I think he signed it this morning yeah. or last week. Yeah. Um, he calls it a sportsman law. It allows parents to decide when their child is old enough to shoot, to go hunting. Now, I, I know you're a big hunter, and I understand, I, I, as I understand <clears> it, since we have started allowing mentors to go into the woods with their children 
or a guardian, someone who's, who they're watching, and go in there and show them how to hunt. Accidents have been reduced unbelievably since that program was started. Gun safety, that's all been terrific, gun safety classes. But now you're going to allow a child of any age to go in with his or her own gun, and the adult can, has, can have his or her own gun. I don't think that's safe. Some people call it the Wisconsin kitties can carry gun. Um, I just think it's very ill-advised. And, and I wonder what you think. We have, uh, uh, I had, did an interview with uh, um, a veteran uh, hunters, heroes uh, for veterans hunt or something like that in Wyoming. Uh, and two of them went there and I did a little story in my column about um, the wonderful experience they had uh, uh, that they provided to, to these veterans. One of them is a uh, mentor who's been mentoring a handicapped uh, hunter uh, for 15 years. Mm -hmm. He says, the guy is partly blind. I have to go out there and we um, I have to point out where the, where the animal, they can see, but it's just limited. Um, and he said, uh, last year he got a bear. And he said, but he said, if they pass this bill, uh, where the mentor and the uh, uh, the hunter mentee, mentee uh, both have guns, he says, "I'm going to quit because you cannot do both safely. No. Take care of, of 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 your person you're mentoring, uh, and also hunting. It is an absolutely air." Um, and the argument uh, um, the legislators have made: well, 25 states. Right. do that. Well, in Wisconsin, we have what's called the Wisconsin Conservation Congress. All the citizens have a chance to meet every year to discuss issues, to discuss them, send them around to the DNR board, get them back, and then pass them. Uh, and uh, hopefully the legislature will then uh, uh, take it up and, and provide some good legislation. This is a bunch of, of uh, people who see that some states don't have it. They think Wisconsin should have it. Uh, some discussion, but not very much. Not much. Who would no. push for this bill? Well, just just probably somebody who doesn't you know yeah. enough about uh, what the hazards are of people who are not fully capable of handling a rifle at that, that young age. Um, before we got on the air, we were talking about the fact that uh, we have a lot of different ages that are scientifically based. You can't be president or run for president until you're 35. U.S. Senate is 20, 30, House of Representatives is 25, and there's a reason for that, because uh, experience, of course, but also brain development. Uh, the human brain does not fully develop until the mid-20s, and then, of course, uh, there's a decline as you get older, but the, the pinnacle of full development is at that age. And so that's why we say you can't drive a car uh, in most states till you're about the age of 16. Uh, we raised it a number of years ago when I was in Lone Setcher, the drinking age from 18 to 21. All of these were based on the fact that some people just uh, are not fully developed uh, physically and mentally, socially, uh, until certain ages. And to think that carrying a, a rifle uh, that needs to be pointed in a certain direction when you're carrying it, that needs a safety on, that may shouldn't be loaded at some sometimes, uh, and you shouldn't be standing it against a tree with the barrel up. Um, these are all things that are hazards that you think a six and seven year old kid right. is going to think about. Because our existing law already allowed you to go out if you were as young as 10, correct? Mm -hmm. Right, yes. So now if you are, you can have your child younger than 10 with a gun, with their own gun in the woods, putting everybody else at risk. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It, it, it I defies just, uh, good thinking I, and I, knowledge. I, 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 and I think this is true of so many pieces of legislation. Yeah. You know, even the health care debate, uh, people who, who, who dump on Obamacare says, well, one time, you know, we had 50 million people went on ins health insurance. We cut that in half under Obamacare. And people who bought their own insurance were paying $1,000 a year more in premiums because you had 50 million people who are, in, are insured. Don't you want to have a better system? Why should you be paying more? Because right. these people don't. I mean, this is stupid, but yet people... Right. Gut reaction, I don't like Obamacare. Right. Well, it was an attempt to, to solve a problem that was very worthy and ought to be improved and worked upon because of good reason. There's mm -hmm. facts behind it. But so many pieces of legislation are just boneheaded ideas that yeah. come from people, in many cases, who shouldn't even be in the legislature. No. Um, I often cite that, and Jim knows that, a body of 
99 in the Assembly and 33 in the Senate. Uh, there are some people there that, uh, you know, for democracy's sake, they're there. But uh, their horsepower between the ears is not uh, anything they, they could be proud of, and they don't contribute a heck of a lot because they just don't think very deeply into things or study things or come to conclusions that are, 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 are really good solutions. And, and both you and you both served for a long time, for many years in the legislature as state assemblymen and as senators. Um, and isn't it true that some of that legislation is actually written by lobbying groups? Oh, sure. By ALEC, by whatever, certain medical well, things. Well, and, and my guess just, is the, the, the children's uh, uh, hunting thing was uh, picked up by one of the legislators that saw another state didn't have it. They looked at the rules and he just uh, had it drafted uh, to our language. And, uh, well, they were in a bar one day and some <laughs> guy says, well, my seven-year-old kid wants to go on with me. Why can't they? Yeah. Yeah. Why so, stop there? Yeah, my son drove a tractor when he was 12. Well, you know, a car would have been easier. Why not let my 12-year-old so, son drive so, a car? Well, and, and let the parents decide any of that. And, and there Let's are let him drink at 10. Uh, the hunter uh, manual that we teach uh, youth, uh, hunter safety, says you shouldn't uh, take a loaded rifle and put it on, on neck, uh, lean it on a car or put it on top of a, a car or a truck. Um, okay. And what did the legislature do about a year ago? They passed a bill that allowed that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because some special interest, you know, been out west where you can put a loaded gun in back of your pickup truck where there's, you know, maybe 50,000 people in a half the state, uh, probably reasonably safe. But in Wisconsin, we got five and a half million people. You don't yeah. do that. No. But uh, the uh, legislature passed and the governor signed. Um, another one on, on the, a chronic waste disease. The DNR has a a management plan to try to control the spread of chronic waste uh, disease. Uh, and, you know, it's a 40 page uh, manual, all kinds of inputs by veterinarians and others. And one of the things that says in there, the DNR uh, wants the, uh, the legislature not to pass um, feeding and baiting bills. What do they just do? Uh, and the governor just asked uh, last year to, to review that, and they gave the governor the same information about. Uh, not uh, passing bills, and the legislature passed it. Uh, no public, uh, no input mm -hmm. by the DNR. Mm -hmm. Governor signed it, and now we have uh, Sheboygan County um, uh, somewhat in danger because of the uh, lifting of, of uh, and some changes of, of the chronic Man, waste disease. So crazy kind of bill, that's why the check well, and balance Well, they're not science-based. Yeah. Mean, whether it's be that or deep wells that are draining wetlands and rivers and, and lakes, is this policy being made without the benefit of right. studying the and science? And in fact, they in laid fact. off a whole lot of scientists yes, from sure. the DNR, yeah. correct? Yeah. Yeah. So there's less oversight. And DNR <laughs> staff aren't allowed to, to speak at, a, at a, uh, a bill hearing unless the author of the bill asks them to come. Yeah. Well, how can they get input uh, and, and, and reason? Uh, they just want the special interest and in others to do that. So oh, yeah. it's. There are some dark moments in Wisconsin yes, legislative are. history, People and I think uh, we're in it. There is no reason why we can't uh, step back and say, hey, what, what got us to this point? And, and one of the things was deep involvement of the academic community. If you go back to the early 1900s, the legislature would be frequently addressed by people from the University of Wisconsin. They would lecture the legislature on banking, on insurance, and so you look at the 1911 session of the legislature, which passed all kinds of progressive legislation. A lot of that was due to the fact that there were academics saying, here's a better way of doing it. Here's how you should do it. And, and the legislature listened. Now. Yep. They're and not we'll, doing that now. And they're now, and now we, must, we must end our program, and hopefully <sighs> they will see the light, uh, become more check and balance more involved, and pay more attention. involved. Call your legislators. Thank you very much for coming. Until next week, this has been Legislative Update. Thank you, Jim and Kim.